Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. It's the Sketch Monkey here. Today we're having a look at this. I think this is probably the best looking BMW on sale today. And this is, of course, the 2023 BMW M5 competition. What Germans do very, very well is they can wrap a supercar in a saloon package like we have right here. If you don't know about cars, you would think that this is just your average 5 Series and not a twin turbo V8 with 617 horsepower and 0 to 60 in 3 seconds. And if you opt for the M Drivers Package, this will reach a top speed of 190 miles per hour. So what we're gonna do in this video, you know the drill. We're gonna have a look at the design from front, side, rear. There is something really interesting going on in the side that I wanna talk about. And then we're gonna have a look at this gorgeous interior. Why can't BMW make these interiors moving forward? I'm not sure. And then we're gonna go and take this for a drive. Thanks to European Auto House for making this review possible. As the name suggests, they specialize in European cars and they have some really special cars for sale. Go check out the full inventory linked down in the description. Let's start with the front end design of the BMW M5. This to me is proof that BMW still knows how to create gorgeous looking faces for their cars. It's not really that complicated. Actually, I think creating a nice face like this is a lot easier than creating something complex that doesn't look as good. And what I love about this specific front end is if you have a look at the graphics here, for example, the top part, you have the big grills that are connected in the middle. You have the camera right here, front uh, facing camera right in the middle of the, of the nostrils. And then you have the headlights being connected into the grills, but we have a clear separation between the upper part of the graphics and the lower section, which also looks very classic. The reason why I think this is one of the best, probably the best uh, BMW on sale today in 2023 is because we have this front face is almost an, a modernization of the E39, which was a very static, very confident looking front end. Then you have the E60 M5, where it got a lot more organic, but now they're coming back. So this to me is a great modernization, I would say, of the E39 M5. All the graphic details that you have in the front end are exactly where you expect them to be on a BMW. For example, have a look at this intake in the middle. Very typical BMW M design, but instead of having the angle that we have here, almost like a smiley grill for the M5 E39, now they switch that angle out and turn it this way, which I think is totally fine because it complements this angle here. We have one angle going here at the top, the other at the bottom going in the opposite direction. Creates a bit of dynamic feeling in the front end. Then we have the headlights, which have these floating LED strips inside of them. Maybe look a little static because they have the same thickness all over, but still a very nice touch and pretty much and uh, modernization of the angel eyes that we have in the E39. Now, this is, of course, a very nice front end. I think I've got that point through at this point. But what? there's still a couple of things that I would like to change in this front end. I would like to experiment just for, for the fun of it to see what it will look like if we change this angle to have it be in the same angle like we have in the E39, where the grill has the same angle here, and then the intake in the bottom has this smiling intake. And then another detail I wanna play around with is to have this headlight. You see how it's connected here to the grill directly. There is no body work in between. I wanna see what it would look like if we add some separation between these two and have more of a sloping line here and curvature for the headlights just for fun and see what it will look like. Overall, I think this front end with all the chamfers and chisels that we have going on here, for example, another nice chamfer going here and a nice bottom base chamfer for the headlights as well. Overall, it's just a stunning looking BMW. Coming into the side view of the new M5, I think the line flow here is something really beautiful. We have lines going all over the place and I wanna talk more about this shoulder line because this is one of the most interesting shoulder lines I've ever seen on a production car. But before we do that, let's talk about the wheels here. What do we have for the wheel setup? In the front, we have 275s with a 20 inch wheel and we also have 20 inches in the rear, but they're a little bit wider with 285 width on the rear wheels. And we also have this little lip going around the wheel arch. I think that's for protection from rock uh, chips or something like that, Just throwing rocks from the wheels. And looking at this overall wheel design, I think it looks really good, specifically with this cement color in combination with the gold calipers, make the calipers pop 
and I'm glad that they didn't go with in this specific specific M5 that they didn't go with the completely blacked out wheels because it would melt into the body and you can't really see the spoke design here the spokes are actually emphasized even more by having this contrast silver piece or trim color all going around it and I think it makes the color and the design of the wheel pop more when you have a contrast like that. A couple of interesting details right here remember when we talked about the new BMW 330i I'm gonna link that review video down in the description I talked about this line here and how it went from straight and then turned backwards so the angle of the line turned backwards towards the rear end and I said I wanted to switch that out to have it be facing forward and that's exactly what we have in this design so we have this line carving out some of the volumes of the side and you can see that it goes upwards into this front fender instead of turning around 180 degrees like it does in the 3 series this has a better flow to it when you have that kind of angle on this line and up here going in from the shoulder line you have a functional air outlet right here with the M5 competition stamped into this little trim piece beautiful touch as well and I also like these mirrors you have a camera right here for the 360 you have the indicator light implemented in the side mirror itself and of course you have this M specific wing that we have on a lot of M cars pretty much every single M car today which I think adds to separating this from a normal 5 series. Now coming around to the most interesting piece on this design it has to be the shoulder line because it's looks to me it's one of these almost it feels like one of these trick images when you see a staircase it goes round and round and round it looks like it goes up the whole time but it's connected somehow and it kind of blows my mind when I look at pictures like that and this shoulder line actually reminds me of one of those images because have a look at this we have the shoulder line starting back here in the connection with the co uh, corner of the taillight beautiful then it goes through the door handles through the uh, uh, both the front and rear and then into this intake outlet right here that we have with the M competition and then it kind of curves back up and goes all the way back into a chamfer around the greenhouse which then fades in this area it's one of the most beautiful shoulder lines I was think I've ever seen and imagine the designers coming up with this idea to have it go like this turn around here and then go up create a nice chamfer for the greenhouse it's just one of these beautiful touches that makes this generation 5 series unique just by looking at the shoulder line last but not least before we head to the rear end design of this M5 I want to talk about this side skirt as I said in the X5 and the 3 series videos I think BMW makes one of the best integrated side skirts on cars right now because it has this very sharp angle right here and what this does it, it plants the car down on the ground without looking after marketing it feels like this is a piece of the bodywork in combination with this line here and this double action shoulder line that we have going on here it just feels like another line that is part and integrated in this design and looking up here yes we do have the Hofmeister kink intact as it should be specifically on a larger sedan like the 5 series coming around to the rear end of the new M5 I love this, this design just as much as I love the side view in the front of this uh, generation 5 series we have a lot of chamfers going on we have one chamfer right here we have another chamfer up here and this gorgeous chamfer at the bottom housing this diffuser going around here very subtle but very effective in what it does and then we have this line in the bumper itself fading into the side of the car and we also have the line continuing right here into the trunk of the 5 series and we have the camera mounted right there in the center now looking at the lower section here we clearly have a very defined M lower section with this diffuser and the wings in here and the quad bazooka tailpipes with the black tips looking absolutely fantastic and same thing here this reminds me of a modernization of the E39 and looking up here of the taillights they stretch a little wider than what we're used to seeing from previous uh, BMW uh, 5 series what I would like to change here is play around with maybe cutting the taillights at this point maybe redesign the internal pieces here to have it be less horizontal and more like a uh, square of a taillight just to see what that would look like up top we have of course the M lip spoiler up here which has been around on uh, M cars from BMW ever since the e E39 M5 and the E46 M3 
and we have the 50th anniversary logo right here with the M5 competition all blacked out on the very far end of this car. Overall guys, I think this is a beautiful BMW all the way around from the front side and rear. And I can't say that I prefer the three quarter rear view to any other view of this car. But with that said, let's jump in. Let's have a look at what's going on in the interior. Welcome to the inside of the 2023 BMW M5 competition. And as I said, when we first started this video, this is a fantastic interior with the climate controls that we have down here, which has this tactile but at the same time digital interface it's like a mix between the two that i haven't seen in any other car before very cool setup we have a 12.3 inch infotainment screen up here that looks a lot better integrated and then we have in for example the x5 and the 3 series where you can actually see the brackets back here this is what i want to see and it also has some nice radiuses to it and some uh, sloping lines on the side so it's stylized it's not just a flat screen on the dash but the best part is that we have the 12.3 inch gauge cluster integrated in the dash under this big big cap which is going to give a lot of shade you're not going to have any problems with any sort of glare when you're sitting in this car and we also have this chrome piece that this is one detail that i would probably want to change specifically on an m5 i don't want to have chrome inside here but it adds a little bit to the classiness of the car moving further along down this center piece right here we have the start button automatic shut off for the engine button right here i'm going to turn that off and we have the vents which are properly integrated there's no nothing crazy about these vents and that's the thing this 5 series has been around for a while now we have a new one coming out and i'm pretty sure bmw is gonna do what they do with all new models that come out now they're gonna basically make this interior not as nice of a place to be in and we're gonna have a big screen so if you want a proper interior for your 5 series for your m5 I would definitely suggest getting the F90 before the new one comes out. And then we have the radio controls here with the volume button, perfect, with a knob for that, physical buttons for the preset channels right here. And look at this interesting integration of the climate control. It's super cool. I can feel my way because there are cutouts in the plastic itself so i can still drive around and if i want to feel my way to what i'm doing i can still do that because of these cutouts that we have in the plastic cover for the display itself pretty cool integration if you want to have it be digital i think this is a good solution to that to have them be uh, still tactile in a way but still digital behind the plastic screen and down here we have the cover for the wireless charging you have two cup holders here and a cigarette outlet and this power console here with the drive mode button the m mode the setup for the engine chassis steering and everything you want to configure this car as you like it to be then you have the button for the exhaust is right here and the cameras as well this gear lever is just a beautiful piece of art it's covered with carbon fiber trim going around it with this red trim also going in contrast with the carbon fiber and the rest of the materials that we have on this shifter very nicely done and here you have the dial for the screen so you can either choose to use the screen with just your hands or you can with the touchpad or you can use it with this uh, dial down here good option to have both of these available for you so you can kind of choose which one you prefer the most looking at the center armrest here we have a storage with the split opening here you have some usb slots in there not the biggest storage space but right here but i don't really care about that moving on to the gauge cluster i love the look of this it's very high resolution and it just looks great and coming around to this steering wheel it just looks fantastic with the carbon fiber trim going on all spokes on the side and in the bottom as well you have the button for the heated steering wheel right here in typical bmw fashion you have the controls for the radio on the right side and the cruise control right here on the left with the big carbon fiber paddles and just look at the length of this thing this is what i want to see when you have paddles in a sports car like this you want to have them be this long and stick out below the spoke of the lower part of the spoke and also above it so you clearly know where the paddles are at all times when you're driving it and then we have this beautiful m stitching going on the inside of the steering wheel 
Looking at these seats, fantastic looking seats with this cream color in the middle. We have the M5 logo right in the headrest. Not too aggressive looking seats and I kind of like that not having a lot of carbon fiber pieces on the seats where you're sitting. These just feel a little bit more uh, angled towards comfort but they still hug you very well in the corners. And look up here, since this is a full carbon fiber roof, we don't have a sunroof and I'm totally okay with that. I would option for a carbon fiber roof over a sunroof any day. Last but not least, we have a proper sized glove box right here. Jumping in to the back seat, let's see how much space we have back here. This seat in front of me is very leaned backwards right now. It's more than I have in my driver position. And I still have just enough leg room here. Of course, you can move this forward a lot further than this. But me being 6'1", with this passenger seat being almost as far back as it possibly could, still have room here and I also have plenty of headroom. Back here you have two USB-C ports, you have the AC controls with a Duet Climate Zone. Everything you need back here to be comfortable. You know what, that's enough talk about this interior. This is an M5 and it's all about the engine up front. So let's fire this 4.4 liter V8 up and let's hear what this sounds like. M5 power right there. All right, guys, we're driving the 2023 BMW M5 competition. 617 horsepower from a 4.4 liter twin turbo V8, and we have 553 pound feet of torque. Zero to 60 in this beast. Three seconds. Top speed with the M driver package 190 miles per hour. I have it in sport now and in manual. So let's see what this can do. It's pretty quick, that's for sure. It's proper M power going on here. And the thing is, I like this car so much because it feels like, even though the uh, there is a lot of tech and stuff in here, it still feels like uh, almost like an old school BMW. I get that old school vibe from this. I think a lot of it has to do with the exterior design being that proper BMW uh, graphics that we have. We, we have all the graphic features exactly where you expect them to be. And I think that's a big part of it. And then we have this in integration of the gauge cluster, everything going on in here, which I feel is so much better than the, uh, than the newer models BMW with a big screen up here. It's a fantastic machine. Gearbox is an eight speed automatic transmission and I'm using the paddles now, which is super easy because they're so big. And it just goes. I love that we can have this type of supercar performance in a saloon, in a sedan. And that's what the M5, that's what it's all about. And it still has that feeling in the new 2023 one as well. It's gonna be very interesting to see what the next generation M5 is gonna be like. Talking about these seats earlier and how they're not these carbon fiber bucket seats. Personally, I think I would go with these because these feel super comfortable and they definitely hold you in place still well enough to do some sporty driving without any problems of sliding around it in. Huge thanks to European Auto House for letting me review this gorgeous 2023 M5 competition. I'm gonna link their full inventory down in the description if you wanna go and check that out. And thank you for watching. I appreciate you. If you enjoy this type of videos, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to the channel and I will see you in the next video.